Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Today I am reviewing Ubuntu 22.10. Uh, we'll start off with the installation. Uh, you can create a Ubuntu USB drive easily by using Etcher. I've got a video for that um, linked at the top of this video. Uh, I, and installation is quite easy. Choose your language, choose your keyboard settings. Uh, then you have to choose whether you want full or minimal. So full gives you all the applications, minimal gives you just a small subset. Then you choose where you want to install Ubuntu, whether you want to install it alongside another operating system or on its own. And then you choose your time zone for setting your clock and you enter user details for creating a user. And that's when the fun begins. When I first ran Ubuntu, um, I ran all the updates and then I came back a day or so later and it um, I tried to install some screencast and software and the problem I had was I had this message on the screen said you couldn't get a lock there, there was a lock stopping you from installing the software and it turned up the it turned out the updater was the thing that called it causing the lock and there's no notification telling you what's causing the lock there's no progress bar telling you updates are happening no notification saying updates are in progress so you're supposed to just guess. So I'll show you what I did. I went into um, software updates. Uh, Ubuntu is also quite slow um, compared to Linux Mint and Elementary, which I've reviewed previously. Uh, you can see how long it's taken to load this one screen. I've also had to switch from uh, Wayland back to Air X. Windows because none of the screencast and software seems to work properly um, using Wayland. I mean, it's not great on X, I'll be honest with you. So, um, yeah, on the updates, it says uh, it used to say download install automatically. I've changed it to download automatically and I'm installing them manually. It's not ideal because there's security updates, but um, it holds onto the lock and there's no indication of how long it's going to take to, to do this. Um, and when did Linux become, well not Linux, but Ubuntu become annoying as Windows and you finish updating the software and it says, oh, you now need to reboot your machine. I mean, I thought one, one reason for using Linux is that you didn't have to do that. Um, yeah, so doing that, um, I rebooted my machine. Uh, I then opened a terminal and I've ran all of my updates via the terminal um, and that seemed to do the job and I was able to use the software center again. Okay, uh, before I search for more problems, I'm going to uh, go through some of the features of Ubuntu. So Ubuntu uses the GNOME desktop environment and it's fairly straightforward to use. In the left um, side of the screen you've got a launcher bar and so you've got all your applications in the left hand side. Um, so uh, by default you've got Firefox, Thunderbird, and you've got Farm, your file manager, um, LibreOffice Writer. I'm not sure why you only get writer and not all the others down there. Uh, you've got the software manager um, under help, and then you've got your um, rubbish bin there. Uh, so that is an application I'm running, which is a simple screen recorder, and that's what's recorded in this video. And you'll notice there's a little dot next to it, which means there's only one version of that running. Um, I can add other applications to uh, this uh, launch bar, but. Um, to do that I'll show you um, the applications thing down here. You can either launch it by clicking this button or you can press the Windows and A key at the same time. And as you can see that brings up a list of applications installed on the system. And up here you've got the workspaces and then you've got a search bar. So if I wanted to search for LibreOffice say, um, I type Libre and all the LibreOffice applications appear. So if I want um, calc on to the launch bar I can right click on that and mm. add to favorites and it appears and I can drag that up and it puts it in position and that will be there until I unpin it so if I right click and do unpin then it goes back so that's how you get applications um, where you want them to be um, it's fairly easy to find them uh, you can also um, get them to open on whichever desktop you want to open them in. So we'll, we'll do solitaire because it's quite light. 
Um, so I can drag that there, and then if I click on there, it's in that, that workspace, and I can uh, move it to the other workspace by right click and do move to workspace right. And if I want to navigate through the workspaces quite easily, I can press the Windows key and page up, and you can see the little dots appear, and so it shows I'm in the left hand one. But if I press page down now, you see it's gone to the middle one, page down again, it's gone to the right one. So I've got three workspaces open. So I can go to the second one, I can close that workspace. So that's how the um, GNOME desktop works, and it's, it's quite intuitive. So uh, let's go through the applications. Uh, You've got um, by default, as, as I mentioned here, Firefox, Thunderbird, File Manager, uh, LibreOffice Writer. Uh, you've got the Software Center. Um, Simple Screen Recorder doesn't come with um, Ubuntu. If I press Windows and Applications, uh, you've got um, additional drivers, which I'll come back to shortly. You've got various games, uh, Isle of Riot, Isle of Riot, um, Solitaire. Um, you've got Mahjong. We've got mines, and then I think on the other page you've got um, Sudoku as well. Um, uh, other applications you've got a calendar, calculator, um, the rest of the LibreOffice suite. You've got Calc, which is a spreadsheet, Draw, which is like Visio um, for making flow charts, etc. Impress is a presentation package like PowerPoint, um, LibreOffice Math. Uh, you've got um, Cheese, which is for webcam. Uh, it's worth pointing out that OBS Studio wasn't installed by default. I've installed that um, uh, as a screencasting software, but didn't really do what I wanted it to do. I wanted a simple screen, screen recorder. Um, videos is the default movie player, um, which as you've seen isn't working very well. For Mina, that's a remote desktop client. We've got Rhythmbox, which is an audio player, which I'll come back to. Shotwell is a photo manager. Again, I'll come back to that. These three aren't installed by default. Uh, they're screencast software. These two are the snap packages that don't work. This is the dev package that does. You've got your software updater, startup applications, a startup disk creator, which enables you to create um, ISOs or uh, USB drives for other distributions. Um, which after using Ubuntu, I'm sure I'm going to be using quite soon. You've got text editor, um, transmission is a BitTorrent client, and the last three don't come installed by default. Um, one of those is a snap package that doesn't work. Um, and, and there we have it, that's um, what comes with Ubuntu by default. Okay, so one thing you will notice um, from this screen is that in the utilities, they're all boxed together like this. So if I click into utilities, you'll see all the utilities that are available. So got image viewers, document viewers, logs, etc., password and keys, your disks, basically all, all stuff like that. So we can create these little boxes ourselves. So if you want to put LibreOffice all into one box, all you have to do is drag one onto the other like this and then you can have all of the LibreOffice things together so uh, I think there should be more than that I missed one yeah so that's the idea is that you can group things together and uh, that makes it uh, much easier to navigate So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Rhythmbox. So this is Rhythmbox and I covered Rhythmbox um, within my um, video uh, which tells you the nine applications I would install onto any uh, Linux distribution. Fortunately uh, Ubuntu have got two of them right in the sense that they've gone for uh, Rhythmbox and Shotwell. Uh, They've chosen Thunderbird over Evolution. That's a good choice as well. Um, whilst I choose Evolution, uh, Thunderbird's just as good. But uh, talking about Rhythmbox, as you can see, uh, I've got all my music in here, um, and you can play any song you want just by uh, clicking it and pressing the play button. 
you can create um, you can click on an artist so you can just see all the songs for a particular artist um, you can scroll down find all the artists you want uh, but uh, you can also create playlists so if I click down here I can do a new playlist and I can call it um, favorite songs or something like that and then when I go back to my music I can then drag my favorite songs um, into there so as you see that's that's how it works uh, I randomly picked those songs by the way yeah but uh, this is all my music anyway so um, probably all my starter music except for the some that I've downloaded for my kids or my wife uh, so that's not the only thing you can do with the playlist you can create an automatic playlist so to do that you click the plus symbol and you do new automatic playlist uh, now in my video of the nine applications this didn't really work the way I wanted it to do but we'll, we'll try again here uh, so I'm gonna say pick a genre and it uh, equals and we'll say punk and we're going to say limit it to 10 songs uh, uh, you, you can choose the sorting um, if you choose by artist you're going to get 10 songs from the same artist that's what I noticed so let's do it by rating with more highly rated songs first. So if I click new and call it best punk, I should now have a playlist with 10 best punk songs in it. And for some reason I don't. Um, maybe I've got nothing that's in the category of punk or they're not highly rated. So we'll try again. This is a bit hit and miss. So again, we'll go for We'll go for genre again and we'll contain metal, limit it to 10 songs, and we'll do it by rating. Let's see if this one's any better. And as you see, it's, it's chosen 10 songs, um, whether the 10 songs you think are the best. Uh, ironically, they're all various artists, but. Um, We've got uh, Back in Black by um, ACDC, Final Countdown Europe. Um, so yeah, that's that's how you create automatic playlists. Also within Rhythmbox, you have podcasts, so you can search for podcasts. Just to add, uh, so if, if I want to podcast about Linux, I can just. Oh, it's saying I've got no network connection. Hold on. There you go, you've got um, a list of uh, Linux podcasts, so Late Night Linux. Uh, when you click on it, it should show a list of episodes down there, and you can subscribe to that podcast. So I'll do that now. Um, and then when I click close on here, you can see I've got Late Night Linux podcasts, and I can listen to any one of those podcasts. Uh, online radio stations, you can add your own in, um, click add, and then you just put in the URL of the internet radio station. Um, but there's a, f a few um, by default. Um, if you've got a Last FM or a Libre Office account, a uh, Libre FM account, then you can log into those and play from there as well. So yeah, um, Rhythmbox is a good audio player. Uh, moving on, we'll now talk about Shotwell. well and it's going to import your photos from your pictures folder you can change that um, as it says file import from folder and you choose which folders you want to import from so I'm not, I'm not going to show that message again and I'm going to let it do it uh, and all I've got here is I've randomly I've got some wallpapers uh, I don't know where they've come from but uh, yeah 
so if I've got one with a pissy cat. And you can do certain enhancements onto the onto the pictures, but generally speaking, you just want to scroll through your photos. You can do slideshows. So it will change every few seconds. So that's how Shopwell works. As I mentioned before, you've got Thunderbird for email. Uh, this will allow you to connect to your um, email accounts, and it works. It's not like um, when I was in review in elementary and they used a mail program that doesn't actually connect to like uh, Gmail. So I, I can um, log in to um, Thunderbird. It will ask me for it. It will go to the Google page, and it will ask me to accept. Um, that I'm happy for Thunderbird to access my mail and then it will list all my emails. I'm not going to do that, um, I don't want to show all my emails off to the world. So let's talk about package management again. I know I've covered this already um, with uh, the early part of the video, but let, let's go into a bit more detail. So you've got the Ubuntu Software Center and it uh, generally deals with uh, snap packages. And you can see there's a, a number of them already listed. These are the editor's choice. So I'd imagine these ones actually work quite well. So I'm going to need Caden Live to edit this video. So let's choose this. And when I click it, it's going to load in the application details. And all things being well, I can click install, enter my password, and it's going to install that application. and hopefully it will work. I've lost confidence in this snap package uh, manager. It's not snap packages in general. I just think uh, there's no one, uh, I don't know who's cu curating the packages, uh, who's testing them, because every single time I try one, they, it doesn't seem to work very well. I might, maybe, maybe I've just been unlucky with the packages I've chosen. But from a usability point of view, that should be quite easy. You know, you're in the software center, you've chosen a package, you've installed it. Um, that's um, that's all you should really need to do. I'm going to leave that to download while we'll continue talking. So l l let's see what is available. Um, so let's search. Uh, I don't think Chrome would be available but Chromium might be. As you can see, it lists a whole load of stuff here. So you've got Office 365 uh, desktop that you can install if you uh, want to use the Microsoft Office suite. Um, it didn't, as you can see, it didn't um, list Chrome as an application, but it does have Chromium. So I can install Chromium. Uh, I'm not sure what the search is coming back with all these things quite like this, but some Quite nice suggestions. Um, I'm actually looking to set up a home media server, so that's that's quite a nice one to to see. So you can uh, install Chromium. Uh, as you can see, GIMP's available. Uh, Dropbox is that available? So if you followed my video about backing up your your files and folders, um, especially if you're using Windows and you've moved over to Linux, then uh, one of the cloud applications I suggested, so there were three, there was uh, Office um, 365 or OneDrive, which probably isn't much use on Linux, although you saw the Office 365 desktop thing there, so maybe that does work. Uh, Dropbox is another one, and the third one is Google Drive. So if you've backed, so if you come from Windows environment, if you've backed up your files, uh, and you want to access those files from Ubuntu, um, let's, let's, let's install that and see if it works or not. And um, whilst that's doing that, we'll, we'll look at see if Google Drive is available. I have the feeling with the Google programs, you're probably going to need to go onto the Google website themselves itself. And uh, we'll do that shortly. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything to do with Google Drive here. 
Google Drive client for the command line. Um, it's kind of interesting. Google Drive GUI for Windows, Mac, Linux. Is that an official one? I'm, I'm guessing not. Let's have a look. It's got two out of five stars. Wow. <laughs> automatically. Ironically, I'm looking at this and it says automatically randomly deletes the Google Drive files from my laptop. But he's given it three out of five. <laughs> if it's obviously deleting files off my laptop that I don't want deleted. I'm not giving that a three out of five. Uh, it does not work. Two out of five. I mean, if it doesn't work. Yeah, this that doesn't look good at all. Uh, although those reviews were quite a while ago. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go onto Google's website and see if we can get the the files from there. So um, let's see if. Dropbox is finished installing. It has. So let's try it out. It shows us a message there. I'm going to close this now because we don't need it. You can see, even though we've installed it from the um, Snap Store, it's still got a bit of installation to go. Oh, another app you might want is, of course, Steam. If you're a, a gamer, let's have a quick look. See if Steam's available. Really, no reason why it shouldn't be um, one of the top distributions. Yeah, it's got the Steam installer, and you've got Game Hub as well. All your games in one place. Um, Proton enabled games. Here's the problem you've got oh, what's this launch of the Steam software distribution service? I'm not sure what that is. Let's have a look. So that's basically Steam. So that's Steam as well. So that's that's my point about the these repositories is that you get too many similar things potentially installing the same software. As you can see, actually, if you open the um, Explorer, uh, the file manager, you'll see there's now a Dropbox folder in there. Uh, so I can open Dropbox and you can see this is all my Dropbox folders. So um, yeah, I can access uh, everything from Dropbox after running and installing Dropbox. So uh, that is good. So uh, if you've backed up from your Windows PC to Dropbox, you can now access your files from Ubuntu and you can uh, use it just the same. So that's, that's, that's good. So let's talk about Google stuff. Uh, we should be able to go and get Chrome. So if we go uh, download Chrome, I prefer to use this one. Purely because it's the official Google website and all I have to do is download Chrome. Accept and install. You'll see there's a Debian package or a Fedora OpenSUSE package. Uh, obviously, a Debian package for Ubuntu. So, to install it, just have to open it. Software install. loading it into software center and then you just click install into your password and what we're going to do is we're going to leave that running 
because I want to look to see if Google Drive is available. So we'll minimize this. You'll see every time a program is running, you've got a little dot next to it. So the dot against Firefox. So if I open a new tab here, new window, you see there's now two dots because I've got two versions of Firefox running. Close that down. Uh, you'll have seen in the background a little message popped up to say Chrome is now installed. So if I click here, um, and there's Chrome, so I can now add to favorites, drag that to the top, and I can unpin Firefox. So Firefox, if you notice, is still on the screen. That's because I've got one running. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to look for is Google Drive. This doesn't give me the option to download Google Drive, but it does um, actually let me in so I can see all my files backed up but there doesn't appear to be an option to install drive as as an application within ubuntu so with that being said let's try that one from the app store Oddly, despite the poor reviews, 1.6 out of 5, this one's considered safe. Whereas Google Chrome, which I downloaded from the Chrome uh, from the Google website, um, is considered unsafe because it hasn't been curated. Drive. Drive. Open Drive. The so first thing is you've got to connect to your Google account. I will edit this bit out. Uh, and uh, okay, so I've tried to sign in with Google and it's a disabled client. So um, that's a fail on that score. That's more to do with the app than Ubuntu. Um, okay. So my problem with Elementary was the apps in their App Center whilst they were curated there weren't very many of them and not many big applications in there so you had to go to Flathub to download the um, Flatpaks which isn't actually a, as bad a suggestion as it sounds um, you go to Flathub and you get them from there now Ubuntu's got the opposite way around is you've got this software center full of applications and it's hit or miss whether they work or not uh, so next I want to move on to system settings, hardware and things like that. So let's start off with changing these desktop wallpapers. Uh, this is the default one for Ubuntu 2210. Uh, so if I want to change the desktop background, right click, change background, simple as that. Uh, there's default dark or light and you've got the different backgrounds in here. So I mean that one's quite nice. Um, but you can add your own pictures in and as you saw earlier I've got my wallpaper folder so I can select all of those open and they should all appear and so I can select one of the ones down here I have no idea what that one is by the way so uh, I don't know who that is I'm not a basketball fan Don't know who they are. Are they a pop group? I assume they must be. Uh, yeah, so that's how you change your wallpaper. I'm trying to find one to settle on. This would be the one I'm, I'm going to settle on for now. Or a country house. 
Uh, so that's how you change your wallpaper. And you can change this bar here as well. Desktop icon settings. You can. So the desktop icons. Uh, this is this bit here. So you've got um, the home folder. Uh, you can choose where to pick them. Top left or white, right, bottom left, bottom right. Uh, show your personal folder. So if I click no, that disappears. So we've got the dock down the left hand side. Um, you can have auto hide on the dock. So in theory, now that should auto hide as soon as I put something over it. Um, if I don't do that, when I drag over it, it's going to go underneath. Uh, the dock extends to the screen edge. Uh, if you have it off, then as you can see, it's more of a it's a shorter bar, and it's only using the space used by the icons within it. Uh, you can change the icon size, make it much smaller, which much nicer. Um, choose which display it goes on. I've only got one, so it's, it's moot point. Uh, position on the screen if you want to make it more Apple-like, you can put it at the bottom and you can configure the dock behaviour um, so include unmounted drives and include network volumes so if I do that and that well I could just show that like that and you've got the rubbish bin there you can choose whether to show that or not and there you go so that's quite nice for um, your display settings I'm actually going to leave it like that, I quite like it. Um, sharing. Um, anyone who wants to, like if I want to set remote desktop up, you can. So I, I click that there and I can turn remote desktop on so other people can then connect to my computer using these details and whatever password I set in there. Media sharing, the same. so. Uh, anything about music I can share across the network so other people would be able to um, view those pictures, play the videos, listen to the music. Printers, is a, it's, it found my printer straight away, I didn't have to set that up and it works so that's good. Uh, default applications so uh, my video definitely needs to change to VLC uh, because the media player as far as I'm concerned doesn't work. And there were no additional drivers available. Uh, essentially, my Wi Fi drive is actually obviously built into the kernel now, so it doesn't need to be an additional driver. Uh, so, let's summarize the Ubuntu experience. Um, installation, fine. The initial attempt at installing packages, um, because it was trying to install updates at the same time. It doesn't give you any notifications, it locks the package manager, it just stops you doing stuff and there's no indication of when it will be finished. So um, from that point of view I didn't like that. The App Store, the software center in general, there's lots of packages that don't work or broken or they don't work with Wayland. Uh, so there's a problem with Wayland there so um, I logged out and logged in as uh, under X and uh, things seem to be a bit better doing that. Uh, usability, GNOME desktop's fine. Uh, it's not the fastest but um, it's easy to use. It's not the most configurable either um, but you know you can you can do you can make it do what you want really but it's not like XFCE um, in terms of customizability. Uh, it, Applications that are installed by default, yes, it is a decent set. Um, you've got Office Suite, Audio Player, Video Player, although the Video Player didn't work, uh, Photo Manager, etc. Uh, once the Software Center was working, I could install quite a lot of packages uh, of the common packages that you'd want to install, so that's good. So, uh, Dropbox, for instance, you could install GIMP, Caden Live. Uh, it depends what you want. Uh, you saw Steam was sitting there. 
Um, as I said, my only criticism or main criticism is the number of um, duplicate packages or packages that appear to be broken. And that just about covers it for this video. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, if you use Ubuntu daily, are you happy with it? Um, I don't think I'm going to be sticking around. Uh, I, I think Ubuntu, I've used it over the years. It's not as good as Mint. I'm going to level with you. I think Mint's far superior to Ubuntu when it comes to usability. And I'd actually say I preferred using Elementary over Ubuntu. Um, but thank you for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Everyday Linux User. Thank you for watching.